So Green's theorem. Let me go ahead and write this out in green. So perhaps this is immediately obvious to you why the line integral of a vector field is going to be equal to the double integral over the region D enclosed by my line of Q sub X minus P sub Y. Um, but if it's immediately obvious to you, I think you're probably in the minority. Because at least myself, um, this isn't really obvious why this would be the case. It's kind of, it honestly, it looks like kind of a bizarre connection. Um, so the point of the video here is to just, not to give you a rigorous um, proof of why this is true, but just to give you kind of a general intuition of, um, of why this equality actually holds. So um, in order to do that, let me go ahead and first just um, kind of plot this out to get a, a visual idea of what this is saying. So we've got our xy plane here, and let's just say we've got some kind of vector field that um, is going to overlay this plane. And let's say we've got some kind of loop around here, which is our C, that's some kind of path, maybe an object's traveling around this. And say it's traveling in this counterclockwise direction, just for convenience. And say we want to find this line integral, which would be represented um, up here. And just to kind of give like a, maybe an application of what this might be, if we could imagine that, say, this is a wind vector field, and this is the, uh, this is the path of particles traveling, and we want to know um, what's the work that um, this wind vector field is doing on this particle as it travels in that direction, um, we would use this integral. So let me just say that this is, for example, this could equal um, work. All right, so um, if you just bear with me for a second, let's, like, let's just um, look at a smaller piece within here. So this is kind of like a macroscopic um, work. Let's look at a, more, at a kind of a more micro level. And let's just say we had a smaller line integral, and we we're looking at something like this. We want to find the work um, around this loop here. And let's, instead of um, C, let's just call this L just to distinguish it. So we could imagine that that work around the, this little one is going to be equal to this line integral um, across L here, not C, of my vector function dotted with, let's say, DL, because it's a little bit different than our R. And let's just call this area, this is like 1, this is like my square 1, so W1 is equal to this. And you could imagine, if I'm just looking kind of where I, got, I see this vector here, I notice that the path that I'm traveling here, this counterclockwise path, is kind of in line with where this, um, this vector is pointing downward right here. So um, I would just say, at least according to what we're seeing here on this, on the, this side of it, that um, let's just say that's going to be greater than 0. But um, imagine we had one right next to it. And we'll call this, say, region 2 here. Also going counterclockwise. Um, but you can see it's going to it's go, it's go up this way, and that's going to be like directly against where this vector field is pointing. So you can imagine, at least based on this vector here, that W2 is going to be less than 0. Um, so, um, so what you might notice here is um, if, I, if I added these two together, that, that place that's touching them in the middle is kind of going to cancel out. The work that, you know, the greater than zero work from this W1 line integral is going to cancel out, um, at least along this line. Um, so what that means and why that's important is, it is um, the basic idea of Green's theorem is if I make a bunch of boxes like this, Um, say this is you know three or four here, and I just fill this whole region D up with it. I could get a general approximation if I added all these little line integrals up. And the reason that that's if I added these up is going to give me a general approximation is because all these places in the middle where they're touching, they're going to cancel out. Um, but the places on the edges aren't going to cancel out, and so I'll just be left with sort of adding up all these little increments along the side, and that's going to give me um, that that basic line integral. So if I put that into um, sort of mathematical notation, again, this isn't anything rigorous I'm doing here, but let's just um, kind of translate this idea. So that um, big line integral that we're trying to connect to, um, to this double integral is actually going to be equal to, we're going to have an approximate sign because we're just using big squares for now, approximately equal to the sum of all these little ones. 
So um, again, let me emphasize: this is not a rigorous proof here. This, this is this is just a, a base, just to give you a basic idea. This saying that that line integral as I go around here is going to be equal to approximately to the sum of all of these little line integrals in the middle. So um, you may think, well, that doesn't really help much because that's is not this isn't really close to what we have here. I mean, this is qx minus p sub y. So where does the, um, where do we get this from? Well, you may just kind of look at that and maybe, maybe it rings um, a bell for you because you might be familiar that if we're defining f as a function of x and y and it's going to be equal to, say, p, q, 0, well, you may be familiar with this, um, that if I take the curl of that, That's going to be equal to q sub x minus p sub y. OK, well, maybe that doesn't really help, because what does this line integral have to do with the curl, anyway? Um, well, you may be familiar with the definition of curl as equal to del cross f. And that's a good notation, especially if you're um, thinking of this in Cartesian coordinates. Um, however, it gets a little more tricky if you're moving this to um, cylindrical or spherical. So this isn't actually the technical definition of what curl is. So it turns out that curl of f dot k hat is going to be equal to this line integral of f over delta a, where delta a is sort of this area here. Now, if you stop right here for a minute, like this may just kind of come out of nowhere. You're like, where does this even come from? But it shouldn't be that crazy to understand because um, if we're looking at one of these little um, line integrals here, you can see that that line integral is basically telling you how much that vector field is curling around this little this little um, square that we're at here, and um, and that's really what curl tells you, right? Curl tells you um, if we use the right hand rule, it tells you how much how much how much that um, vector field is curling at a certain point. And if that, if that um, vector field is going counterclockwise, then we know that that's positive curl. It's positive in that, in that z direction. Um, so in, in the same case, this line integral is going to give you um, a positive value if, you've got, if your vector field is curling in that direction as well. So this connection here shouldn't be that um, crazy to, to, um, to, to imagine that this is, what, this is the actual technical definition of, of, of how you find curl. So what we can do from here, now we're getting really close. All we got to do is isolate this line integral here and, um, and plug in everything on the left side up into this line integral up here. So we can go ahead and approximate this as the summation of curl of f dot k hat delta a. Okay, so now we're getting we're getting somewhere close um, because now this is kind of just an approximation. We're using big delta a's here, but if you take an infinite number of these rectangles that are infinitesimally thin and add up the line integrals over all of those over this region, you actually get an exact equality. So instead of approximate, we get an exact equal sign here. We'll change that summation to this double integral over our region d, and we've still got curl of f dot k hat, although this delta a now becomes a da because we've gone to infinitesimally small rectangles. And now, um, perhaps you can finally see the connection between this side here, because of course that curl of f dot k, if you recall, is just qx minus py. It's just this up here. So this is where we get Green's theorem. So again, let me reemphasize, this is not a rigorous proof of why Green's theorem is true. Um, but hopefully, it kind of gave you an idea of where this, of where this comes from, where how you can translate this line integral to this, um, this double integral over that region that the um, line, that closed line integral is surrounding. Um, because, again, if you're like me, this is not immediately obvious. So, um, hope this helps a little bit. And until next time, take care. <laughs>